Today I will reveal the biggest secret of chess professionals how to analyze your chess games. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg. I'm chess grandmaster in this YouTube channel and today my dear viewers we are going to learn how to analyze your chess games using five key tips. Tip number one, look for critical mistakes. Identify key moves that caused significant losses or missed opportunities and figure out what led to them. For example, miscalculation, lack of focus, or maybe time trouble. Tip number two, compare with engine moves. Use a chess engine like Stockfish, for example, in Chesscom to compare your moves with the best moves in every position. Try to understand why the engine choose certain moves to improve your understanding, of course. Tip number three, focus on key moments. Identify critical moments where the game shifted such as a transition between opening, middle game and end game and see if you could have been made better decisions. Tip number four, analyze your overall plans. Think about the strategies you used, where your plans appropriate the position. Maybe, you know, maybe you need to exploit your opponent's weakness effectively better. Tip number five, Pay attention to time management. You know, it's so important. If you spend too much or maybe too little time on certain moves, reflect on how better time management could have been improved your play, right? And your moves. You know, in this video, I have taken three games from my viewers that were sent to me. All played a rapid games control in the chess com, of course, not bullet, not blitz because you know in rapid you have the time to think both positionally and also tactically with calculations we will analyze them together and see how to apply the tips we have just learned right now so just sit back relax and enjoy the analysis okay so we started the first game uh, we have from india jazz 023 against another person from uh, India but our viewer is with the white pieces so let's see how this game goes knight f3 d5 g3 so until now it seems that you know he's playing regular uh, opening with knight f3 with g3 something maybe about king's attack i don't know king's indian attack with g3 bishop g2 but i don't know if we will play the move d4 d3 but let's see so knight c6 was played uh, I think overall uh, now we already can, uh, you know, uh, for for one minute to stop the the analysis and understand after knight c6 what white should play. You know, uh, black threatening to play the move e5 with e4. You know, to put these two pawns uh, on the center. And you know, in my opinion, d4 should be the move here, right? Just to avoid this e5 and uh, move. And after it, bishop g2 with c4, and let's see. But what played the move bishop g2 as you can see also the time control in this game was rapid 10 minutes uh, per each one of them So we played the move bishop g2 and now bishop f5 was played until now white played very fast d4 now strong move until now Yeah, e6 castle and bishop d6 And now knight c3 was played. I think as you can see here, uh, you know um the the computer says that it was a good move but not was the best I, I can tell you that in this position you also can stop and think why knight c3 is not the best move here right so after you understand you you, you can understand from the computer analysis what is the best move you can uh, you know define and um, uh, conclude for yourself why this is the best move so the best move here is to play the move c4 and why because you're bringing another pawn into the center maybe c5 maybe c takes d5 and maybe knight c3 after it right so you're bringing one pawn into the center and after it you will have the possibility to bring the knight to c3 
but not blocking the pawn on c2, right? So for example, after c4, when you are analyzing this game, you're, you know what, I'm, I'm not understanding at all why d takes c4 is not a good move, right? We are just sacrificing one pawn. But as you can see now, for example, in my opinion, queen a4 looks very, uh, very good for white, just attacking the pawn back and also uh, thinking about this pin with knight a5, maybe knight c3, e4. There is a lot of initiative here for white. So also an, another move interesting is to play the move knight bd2. Also controlling the e4 pawn, you know, e4 square, and maybe uh, in the next move we'll play the move e4. And also attacking the pawn on c4, right? So knight bd2 also looks very promising. So c4, you understand, this is the first, you know, chapter uh, in this uh, analyze of the game to understand why knight c3 was a little bit not the best here and why it's not the best and what what should be the best move here and what is the plan for you right so knight c3 i'm after knight c3 i'm not sure that i uh, if i will would play here with white pieces i understand what is your plan right let's see so we play the move knight f6 and now white play the move rookie one okay uh, here there is a very strong move to play the move knight h4 I believe and why because you are attacking this bishop on f5 of course you're not threatening something uh, you know uh, very dramatically but because uh, there is a one pawn here that defend this uh, bishop on uh, f5 but you really wants to to have the um, the the two bishops right so for example if he's playing with bishop g4 i think h3 should be the move bishop h5 and now i don't know g4 is not working because knight takes g4 right and queen takes h4 and checkmate for example let's see the the analyze of the calculation here g4 knight takes g4 e takes h takes of course queen takes h4 and now after g takes h5 queen h2 checkmate and we are losing so g4 is not good but as you can see the bishop here is not in the best right so maybe we can play the move i don't know yes the computer says knight b5 i don't know it's it looks very uh, I'm not sure about his move, right? Because probably after bishop e7, he wants to play a yeah, bishop f4 and attack this pawn on c7, and maybe the next move will be c4, right? Because he really wants to bring the the c the c pawn uh, into the center. So rook e1 was played, and also this move is good move by the computer. But what is the plan, right? e4 you cannot play right now because there is this pawn, uh, sorry, this pawn, this bishop, and this knight. So e4 is not the threat. So what, what is your plan, right? For example, I thought for black maybe to play the move knight b4. I don't know if it's good. Yeah, maybe it's also good. You can see that e4 is the only move here. And uh, I, I don't know. It seems that black just uh, grab a pawn, right? So it's not so easy to understand because rookie one, first of all, you need to think about plan. You need to think about progress. How do, how do you uh, develop your pieces? So this is the plan process, okay? Rookie one was played, castle, and now bishop g5. I like this move. Uh, you're developing a bishop. Also, now maybe you have some threat about e4 because after e4, there is this pin. So this knight is not concluding in the calculation of taking on e4. So bishop b4 uh, was played, and now knight e5. Let's see, yeah, knight e5 was a very strong move by the computer. I can tell you that it's it's really interesting move uh, by white. The plan also to attack this knight on c6 and maybe, you know, like to, uh, to, to crush this pawn structure and also maybe to, to open this diagonal for the bishop. In some ways, e4 maybe in the next future will come, right? Because this bishop on f5 is doing absolutely great. So knight e5 looking strong and also don't forget that knight takes e5 is, is not so good because d takes e5 and this pin is not so easy. Of course, there is h6 bishop h4 and g5 but yeah it looks it looks i don't know queen d4 yeah very strong attacking this pawn and also this bishop so this position is very very good for white uh, so 95 was played very strong move uh, bishop e7 he's coming back with his bishop let's see what now bishop takes f6 and this this move you can see that the computer says okay it, it's a good move but i can tell you that uh, I, i'm not sure about it and why First of all, you can learn uh, about it that, you know, I'm playing uh, some somewhere like uh, 22 years chess and bishop takes f6 is, is not is not a move that I, I will I would be play in this position, uh, not because of uh, maybe it's it's a bad move. It's not a bad move. It's fine. Ev absolutely fine. Right. But 
The bishop is strong here, right? And this knight is, I'm not sure about his strength, right? So to take this bishop against this knight, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not sure what is your plan. Why do you want to exchange this bishop against this knight, right? This is very interesting question that you need to ask yourself. So bishop takes f6 was plain. Uh, also, you can see that the computer says it's fine, but you know, maybe the second, yeah, the second line, bishop takes f6, but I don't know, I, I think that maybe bishop f4, better one, you know, I, I really don't like to, to bring a bishop pair like this uh, with, with no, there is nothing to worry about, right? Why to take on, on, on f6, maybe also to come back, I don't know, bishop f4, and maybe to take this knight on c6. But taking this bishop, uh, this knight, of course, with this bishop, I'm not sure. You also need to think about the positional understanding in this position and why. Because you need to ask yourself, this bishop is stronger than this knight or not? I really want to exchange it or not? What I will, uh, you know, what I will earn from this exchange? So it's very complicated. Bishop takes f6, bishop takes, and now e4. So this was the point to play the move e4 because the knight on f6, uh, you know, uh, defend the, the pawn on e4, uh, the square, bishop g6 was played. So now d takes e4 was, was absolutely uh, strongest for, for black because the d4 pawn is also in under attack. For example, knight takes e6, b takes e6, I don't know, knight takes e4, maybe queen takes d4. Yeah, uh, black is just up a pawn, right? And I'm not sure that white has initiative about it. These bishops are doing great and yeah, so e4 was was not the best, but bishop g6 was played. And as you can see, you know, if if uh, our uh, player was with the black pieces, you can see he played very fast, nine seconds about bishop g6, and this was a very big mistake. Uh, e takes d5, strong move, e takes d5, and now knight takes g6 was a miss. And why? Because let's think about the position. Now you need to calculate a little bit, right? And it's very important in chess. So what about taking the pawn, right? So in every position that you have like um, uh, checks or maybe uh, to take something, you need to consider it. So for example, in this position, you, you need to consider knight takes c6, knight takes g6, maybe knight takes d5, maybe bishop takes d5. So first of all, maybe in the next future you can play, uh, you know, rapid games like 30 minutes per, per each player, maybe 25, because 10 minutes is, is you know, it's it's, like rapid, but but fast rapid, right? It's something about blitz. So you need to play fast. So here, every move is con considerable, uh, of, of, of course, and absolutely. But knight takes d5, just pawn up, right? And you also can see that the bishop is guarding this uh, square on d5. And it, it seems very good because this knight is doing great job here. But when you are taking this bishop on g6 and h takes g6 was played and knight takes d5, for example, just knight takes d4, right? This pawn on d4 now uh, is controlling the, with the bishop. So knight e5 was, was a good good square here for this knight. So don't forget about it. So in this issue, you can play the move knight takes g6 and your computer says, you know, it's a miss. And why it's a miss? Because the d4 pawn now is weak pawn. So f takes g5, g6 was played. Now bishop takes d5. I think it's fine move. Overall, of course, you don't need to play exactly what computer says. It's very important to understand. Uh, you know, not every single move. Oh, what a mistake! The computer says it's bad. No, everything is fine. You know, also Magnus Carlsen, the best player in history of the game, uh, is doing so much mistakes. Of course, I'm doing. You know, like every single game, I'm doing. Uh, so much mistakes and I need to learn and uh, to improve as uh, all of the chess players. So don't be, you know, like uh, very, um, you know, um, uh, rush with yourself. It, it's fine. It's fine to, to do mistakes. It's fine to do inaccuracy. It's totally uh, also blunders. It's totally fine. Right. So king h8 and now bishop takes e6 good move because the pawn on d4 is under attack and you need to take uh, from, uh, you know, the knight on c6 that attacking the d4 pawn b takes c6 and now d5 and this was a mistake why because the d4 pawn is under attack and now we need to consider how to defend it in my opinion my first move that i thought rookie four right 
just uh, to to defend his pawn with the rook and that's it for example another move is knight d2 maybe yeah to, co to also to defend this pawn and also maybe uh, try to play c3 in the next move so just one pawn up and that's it but he played the move d5 our viewer come on you can do it let's see it so why why this is a mistake let's learn together from in my opinion, just bishop takes c3, what was in the game is very strong because b takes c3 and now the pawn on d5 is just a free pawn for black. So he's coming back and he's taking the pawn. So this was a mistake by white and also here maybe was c takes d5 also strong because after knight takes this pawn on b2 also uh, hanging, right? So d5, bishop c3, takes, takes and now rook b1, I like this move, you know, you're just bringing another piece into the game, I like it. Uh, congratulations for this move c6 was played and this was you know maybe interesting move for black because you really want to uh, defend this pawn and maybe now uh, you you can play the move queen f6 for example but also here queen f6 is a very logical move you're attacking this pawn on f2 and also the c3 move uh, c3 pawn but we are really want uh, that white will win it so he played the move c6 and we are talking only for white so let's see queen d4 now a very strong move was you know like to, to to activate more the rook from b1 and the move is rook b7 you know this row will be very very uh, you know scary for black rook e e7 and you know wow this file will be just amazing 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 and it will be very difficult uh, to handle with with black's king with queen d4 attacking this g7 pawn yeah it's terrifying right so queen d4 uh, was played in accuracy, but also I can tell you that is is good move overall. You really want to develop your uh, your pieces. You're improving uh, the queen's position. So great, great move. I think you you don't need to be rushed. Don't forget it. Right? Everything is fine. The computer says in accuracy. It's okay. It's okay. So queen e5 and this was a blunder. Yeah, queen f6. I thought right. No, it's not the best also. Yeah, rook b7. So maybe, uh, yeah, queen d7 was the best move for black just uh, to avoid uh, this rook to come to b7 and, and also to uh, to defend this pawn on g7 and also to controlling be between the rooks and maybe rook a8, the next move. So yeah, queen d7 was the, be the best, but queen a5 was like, you know, to attack this pawn. But hey, don't forget rook b7 and we're attacking here so much checkmates in the board so rook g8 now next rook to e7 queen takes a2 now rook takes g7 and yeah king g2 and that's it checkmate and our viewer jazz zero two three won this game and i really hope you enjoyed this analysis uh, an analyze of this game so you finished with five minutes and 222 seconds on this clock and you know I, I like to see it right it's very important uh, to have you know the confidence to think and to learn and uh, and also to consider some moves as you can see a black finished his game with eight minutes and this is something strange to see right you're losing the game and also thought about 20 percent of your time it's not something uh, good to to see let's go for the second game so let's try to do it uh, you know like faster because you know it it took me so much time knight of three d5 d4 was played by our viewer we have infinity best 20 from india let's see it so knight c6 this is was you know is a book move but i don't know it's it's not the best c4 the best move here uh, just to bring the knight to c3 of course after we are putting the pawn on the center d takes e4 and now knight c3 was played with white pieces uh, looking fine maybe e4 there is also an interesting move and also d5 but overall knight c3 looking uh, very promising you're developing your knight uh, also controlling these squares uh, great move a6 was played the point behind a6 is after e4 to play the move b5 uh, and I think this was the best for white uh, to play the move e4, you know, like uh, to control the center with these two pawns and also somewhere to play the move d5, maybe e5. And uh, yeah, it's not so easy for black to uh, to play here. Maybe something about a4 attacking this pawn and also uh, to try uh, in the next future to take this pawn on c4, right? Because you can see that uh, black didn't develop until now so much pieces. So he played the move e3 and this was the first inaccuracy and why? because you sacrifice one pawn in the opening right and you need to to show why you did it and in this position 
you need to bring some initiative, right? And the initiative here is to play e4, right? In the center. Also, don't forget you are blocking this bishop when you're playing the move e3, right? So e4, you need you want to play maybe bishop f4, d5, bishop c4 is the threat. So you need to control the center. E3, it's some, you know, like a little bit scary move like this, right? You really want to take this pawn, but now b5, right? So, for example, in this situation, after the game, you can see, oh, e3 was not the best, right? But why? What was the best? So, you know, the computer says d5 and after it e4. Of course, it's also fine. Also, e4 and d5 after it, it's, it's totally fine, of, of course, also. So, e3 was playing b5, just uh, defending this pawn on c4, and now a3. Another mistake. And why? Because the best move was to play the move d5. I thought maybe also a4 looking very strong because you really want to attack this pawn on b5 because this pawn is doing a great job to defend uh, this one. And when you're, you know, maybe you can achieve uh, to take this pawn with the bishop, you will have control also about this diagonal. Also, you can castle very fast, right? And also you're developing your bishop. So a4 is like attacking the pawn, they're doing a very strong job here on b5. So a4 was a better option and a3 was a very slowly move that also, you know, uh, for, for my opinion, right, yeah, uh, it's looking like it's a prophylactic move from b4, but I'm not sure that black really wants to play the move b4 because the pawn on c4 will be weak. So let's see, a3, mistake, bishop b7, bishop e2. So here also, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really funny uh, to see that a4 is the best move here for white because you really want to attack this pawn on b5 because this pawn on c4 is very important for you. Bishop e2 was played, uh, knight f6, and now castle, it's fine. e6, and now rook e1. As you can see, you know, this is very important uh, to remember that we have a tip, which tip it? I think uh, tip number four, right? They analyze your overall plans. And why I'm talking about it, because rookie one, what is your plan, right? You can't play very uh, softly and slowly when you are down a pawn, a full pawn. So rookie one, bishop f1, e4, d5, I don't know what is your uh, threats and what is your plan, but it's very slow and you are down a pawn. And as you can see, black is already developing his pieces, right? And also bishop e7, castle, and that's it, one pawn up, thank you very much. So rookie one is not the best plan here for white. Bishop d6 was played and now g3. You can see that white is trying, you know, like to play soft moves and very slowly. And, you know, the best here is to understand that you don't have so much time, right? Because you're down one pawn. G3, another mistake, a miss, I don't know. A4, of course, just to attack this pawn on b5. Every single move, this is the best. Um, you know, just to try and, uh, you know, rush this structure g3 castle now queen c2 was played you know also here i think e4 with bishop g5 you know just develop your pieces try to control the center something around this one and also after e4 you're attacking e5 right and this will be fork so yeah queen c2 was played h6 now bishop f1 as you can see white is playing very very slowly e5 was played black is doing perfect until now d5 attacking the knight knight a5 and now e4 i, I like this move of course also uh, you know opening this diagonal also defend the pawn on d5 so it's look great knight b3 rook b1 great you he attacked the the rook on a1 and now rook is going knight g4 and now h3 very nice move i think by white also just uh, asking him what about this knight man why did you play the move knight g4 and now knight f2 was a big mistake why thank you very much for the knight king takes f2 i thought just queen takes f2 right because after bishop c5 we have bishop e3 and that's it we don't need uh, to to be afraid of this diagonal so we have a very strong bishop here so king takes f2 was a mistake this is very important to understand why it was a mistake why you didn't see in your calculations that after queen takes f2 bishop c5 i can play the move bishop e3 it's very important king takes f2 now bishop c5 bishop e3 great takes takes queen f6 now a4 now you're playing the move a4 i thought maybe to play the move king g1 king g2 right the king is not good in the center of the board you really want to push him so a4 now, it's it's really funny uh, to see this now uh, is coming. b4, this was a mistake. Why? Because now the pawn on c4 is a weak pawn. Knight a2 attacking this pawn and this pawn on b4 
4 with this bishop and this knight. Bishop c8, taking the pawn, I don't know, it's, it looks fine. Queen takes a 3, just taking, uh, bringing a full queen, thank you very much. Takes knight e2, queen e2, uh, I don't know, maybe here uh, queen d3, or queen c2, just, uh, you know, uh, to defend this rook on b1. But okay, it's winning absolutely here, knight takes b4, knight c6, okay, a5. I don't know why, but, you know, just let them move queen d1, take this knight, and after it, think about it, right? a5, I'm not sure what is your plan. Um, g5, rook f6 is nice, attacking this pawn and also uh, opening this diagonal for the queen and attack here, it's good move. h5, just queen takes, queen f7, and yeah, here queen e8 is a mistake, not, not a mistake, but just rook h6, checkmate on the board, right? And you have time, as you can see, 5 minutes and 40 seconds, you have the time to think and to find the checkmate in, the, in one. Uh, but queen e8 was played, and now, yeah, checkmate in different way. So congratulations, another viewer with win. Wow, great. Let's go for the last game. Um, so with white pieces, we have GMEB10. Um, so E4, let's let's see this game. E4, B6, D4, C5. And and yeah, this is something that, you know, you, you, you can't see this uh, every single game, right? It's uh, maybe unusual opening, I can say. So d5 was played, I think overall it's fine. You are putting your pawns uh, in, a, in the center, you're controlling it, you're getting some space advantage, I like it. d6 was played, knight c3, a good move, e6, and now knight f3, until now looking very strong. As you can see, this game was played uh, 15 minutes uh, per each player, and also I think with increment, let's see, it. e5 was played. And now bishop c4. Uh, I think overall it's fine move. Uh, of course, the best move here was to play bishop b5. Um, because, you know, after bishop d7, you just can play the move a4. And the point here that you need maybe to understand and think about it, that you really would like to exchange these two bishops, this pair of bishops. And why? Because the white squares will be very weak. For example, b5 a6, c6, f5, right? This bishop is very strong now and you re you really like uh, to exchange it because this bishop, for example, how you play the move, bishop c4, is not doing so much, right? This pawn is um, just blocking it. So bishop b5 was a little bit better, but let's see. Bishop d7, castle, bishop e7, uh, and now queen e2 was played. Uh, why it's not doing like uh, analyze? I don't know, let's do this one. One second, one second, everything is under control. Let's do this. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, bishop c4, bishop d7, castle, and bishop e7. Now queen e2 was in accuracy. Uh, I think overall it was it was good move, but yeah, there is a tactic here, of course. Uh, not so easy to find, I must tell you. The, the, the tactic was knight xe5. Uh, you know, just to sacrifice full knight, but after d takes e5, d6, you are attacking this bishop, and also you are attacking the next move will be queen d7, with double threat, the a8 rook and the f7 checkmate pawn, right? So, of course, it's not so easy to, to see, uh, but it's a little bit calculations things. And why do we have this calculation hit? I can tell you why. Because in this position, you already castled, you already developed three pieces, and black only developed, like, two pieces, but also it's not like development. You put, like d7 e7 not something crazy and the king on e8 is very weak until now yeah so there is maybe potential for sacrifice right and this is something that it's not easy to find but you can do it right i believe in you so knight e5 was the best but queen e2 also i really like this move knight f6 and now bishop b5 so you know this bishop b5 move is interesting move uh, i thought maybe to play the move a4 for example or maybe bishop g5 or maybe knight d2, also interesting move. But bishop b5, you really want to exchange this bishop, and I like the idea. Uh, but why did you play it uh, two or three moves before, right? Uh, but let's see. Castle, and now bishop takes d7. Also, another option was to play the move a4, and, you know, to, to try uh, um, to put this position on hold. Maybe black will exchange it, and after it, you will play the move a takes b5, and this row, a file, of course, will be open for you. And maybe somehow, like bishop d2, rook a2, rook fa1, and attack this pawn on a7. Interesting idea, right? So, 
Bishop takes d7 was played, but also nice move overall. Knight takes d7 and now bishop g5. And this was probably a mistake. And why? Because there is a very beautiful hit by black. h6 was played, but knight takes d5 was very strong tactic idea. Uh, what is the point? That after bishop takes c7, just knight takes c7 and black has one pawn up. And if you are attacking with the knight, just bishop takes g5. So black took a full pawn, a uh, free pawn, right? It's not so easy, of course, and now, you know, uh, the computer says that white is better because this is a very strong knight and rook fd1 will play and this file will be very uh, not easy to handle with black pieces. But, of course, this was a very strong, uh, you know, continuation with the black. So bishop g5 was an accuracy. I think a4 just to grab more space in the queen side is very logical here. Maybe a5, maybe knight d2, knight c4, knight b5 maybe. This pawn on d6 is weak, maybe f4 in some ways. So this is something to consider. Bishop g5, h6, now take it. And this is interesting uh, solution by white. He's, he's telling, you know, he's claiming that this bishop is bad, you know, is... This knight is better than this bishop. And, you know, it's nice and it's really interesting uh, that this is your thought about this position. And I, I'm thinking about it and maybe it's right. And why? Because in close position, we would like to have knights, right? Uh, and not bishops. Because when we are playing with the bishops, we would like to have open diagonals, open space for them. And now when we're... Uh, having the the knights, we can just, you know, maneuvering them and it's nice. So bishop takes f6, I like this option, but also you need to understand why uh, from the positional perspective. Knight takes f6 and now rook f1. I'm not sure about this move and why. It's excellent move, but what is your plan? Think about it. What is your plan? I'm not sure about it. I think for your, your plan here, maybe, maybe to play the move knight d2. With a4, knight c4, with a5, rook a2, rook fa1. This is the plan, right? Something around this one looking very nice, for me at least. Rook f1 was played, queen d7. Now queen b5. And this was, you know, like uh, the computer says excellent move. I'm not sure about it and why. We need to think if, if we are exchanging this uh, pair of queens is better for us. I'm not sure. It seems to me that this queen on e2 is better piece than the queen on d7 and if we came to this conclusion we will not uh, really want to exchange these queens so queen b5 was interesting move um, but i'm not sure in the you know in the um, positional perspective it was the best queen takes knight takes and now g5 this was a mistake i think overall a6 was a very strong move for for black and after knight c3 probably b5 or c4 uh, I think b5 looking very strong, in my opinion, b5, b4, c4, rook fc8, bishop d8, bishop a5, you know, to, to try to attack, also knight d7, knight b6, you know, with queen b5 and exchanging these queens, you're, get, you're bringing uh, black the options um, uh, just to develop his position in the queen side. So g5 was played, I'm not sure about the plan for him. And now white played the move a4, very nice move. Really uh, wants to get space advantage in the queen side. Also not allowing a6 and b5, right? Uh, and also maybe a5, the next move. Let's see, rook fc8 and now a5. Also I thought about knight d2, knight c4 to bring another piece into this uh, you know, area with attacking this d6 pawn. And also maybe in some ways knight d3, knight f5. Don't forget that this square is very weak after the move g5. So g4, knight d2 and now a6. And this was a mistake. Uh, yeah, here maybe also knight h4 was an interesting move to bring the knight to f5 with a very strong uh, square here. Knight d2 was played a6, attacking the knight on b5, and now just a takes b6. A brilliant move by our viewer, our Israeli player, a takes b6. Uh, you know, just amazing uh, calculation skills. Uh, you know, in, th in this moment, he thought, okay, the knight is under attack, and let's see, these two rooks, I have something around them, right? If I will manage to bring this pawn to, to b7, it's fork. Let's do it. A takes b6. And after a takes b5, we have b7. Uh, double attack here, of course. Very nice. Uh, you know, he thought about it. Let's see. 
One minute, one minute, great. I, I really like to see this one. You think you're getting some time, uh, you're thinking about your time, and also you realize when you need uh, to waste some time for, for the game. And this is really nice, I like it. A takes B5, B7, fork takes, queen takes with check. Of course, rook takes C1 was a blunder. And now just take it, uh, rook A8, take this one, uh, queen H8, also, I don't know, queen F7 looking just like checkmate, right? Uh, but also queen H8, it's fine, rook G8, uh, bring this uh, queen. Oh, okay, it's, it was not the best uh, win here, but queen G5 and checkmate on the board. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's really, really nice to see uh, they're, they're playing. Um, you know, these three viewers won uh, their games and I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. We learn five tips very important for you to analyze your chess games. And I know I, you know, in, in our community, I ask uh, from you to send me in the email so much uh, games I already um, got. So thank you very much for collaboration with me. Um, but I will do another thing like this if you like. So tell me in the comments if you like this video and if you want me to analyze your games in the next video. See you soon. Subscribe my channel, right? Bye-bye.